Okay, so we are moving on to lesson two in unit two. And this lesson has to do with inductive and deductive reasoning. And we use inductive and deductive reasoning every day when we solve problems. So this is more of a formal um, introduction to that. And we are going to use, first we're going to use inductive reasoning. So a couple definitions here. A conjecture is an unproven statement that is based on observations. We use inductive reasoning when we find a pattern in specific cases and then write a conjecture for the general case. So if you notice someone um, always puts their garbage out on Thursdays, then you'd make a conjecture that Thursday is garbage day. So it's seeing a pattern and then making some sort of statement based on your observations, okay? If someone brings their garbage out on Thursdays, maybe they're putting it out early because it gets picked up on Fridays. So your conjecture may be wrong, but you're using kind of incomplete information to make some sort of statement. And we do that a lot. We, we observe patterns every day. So in this first example, we are going to look at a pattern with these three circles. So what I would look for is you look at this. I look at how many sections. So each of these, one section is shaded in, but in the first figure, there are two sections. In the second figure, there are one, two, three, four sections. In the third figure, there are one, two, three, four, five, six sections. So the connection I would make is there's always, look at twice as many sections. In figure one, there's two. Figure two, there's four. Figure three, there's six. So. Our next figure, figure four, I would say, it's going to be a circle. And I would say it has eight sections and one is shaded, right? Okay, so for me to draw this, I'm going to kind of cheat. I have a little tool here that if I draw some sort of circle, it makes a circle for me. So I'm going to do that because my drawing is subpar at best. So when I draw this, I'm going to draw my eight sections. So kind of like a pizza. You've got a section, and then you've got another section, and another section. I'm up to six right now. I've got one more to draw in, and it's not going to be totally even. but We'll do our best with what we've got. So from that, I'm going to shade in one of them, OK? I'm going to shade in this one right here to show that one is shaded. So it's using that pattern and seeing that it has eight sections, one of them is shaded, OK? So moving ahead, see if you can pause the video and find the fifth figure in this pattern. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to allow you guys to try this one and then check your answers with me once you're ready. Okay, so to explain the guided practice, our next figure is going to have 10 sections because it's the fifth figure. 5 times 2 is 10. And I'm going to shade one of the sections, and it was always kind of the top, one of the top left ones. So that's what I looked at is how it fit the pattern. And it's hard to draw that circle, I understand. We're not going for art awards here. We're going for does it fit the pattern, okay? So in two and three, I kind of want to actually show you guys these. If you worked on them, that's great. But I want to show these to you a little more in depth. So the next figure, it's hard to see that shading. But if you look at it, it's kind of like I'm filling in one less piece of the star, right? So I'm going to draw my next star best I can. I'm not good at drawing stars. So I'm doing my best here. And basically, the middle was shaded in all these, OK? And you think about there were, all, there were four shaded in the first one, three in the second, two in the third. And then in the last one, I am going to shade one less. So. It's kind of going counterclockwise, so I would say this bottom left one should be the shaded one, which is a little tricky. 
but you look at four tips, then three tips, then two tips, one tip is shaded. And then this last one, it's a pile of circles. So you have one, three, and then six. So when you're thinking about that one, basically I'm adding a bottom row to that pyramid of circles. So my bottom row is going to have one, two, three, four circles, and then three, and then two, and then one. Okay. So the main thing is, is it's not always the numbers that you see the pattern in, but it's just beyond that, adding a base to that pyramid. Okay. So in the next example, it's making conjectures about numbers. So it says numbers such as 3, 4, and 5 are called consecutive integers. We're going to make and test a conjecture about the sum of any three consecutive integers. So making a conjecture about this is tough because we're talking about any three. There's an infinite amount of possibilities here. So I'm going to just test a few. I'm going to test, first of all, 3 plus 4 plus 5. And that's going to be 7 plus 5, which is 12. And let's just do 4, 5, 6. That's going to be 15. So one thing I can see there, they're not all even or all odd, those sums. But I know one thing that I can say. The sum of three consecutive integers integers, so positive or negative whole numbers, is divisible, oops, divisible by 3. So there is another one, but I want to just focus on you being able to see some of that divisibility there and knowing that those are divisible by 3. So moving ahead, we're going to look at something called a counterexample. So to show a conjecture is true, you have to show it's true for all cases. So that consecutive integers one would have been really, really hard to prove for all cases, basically impossible, if we're going to go case by case. However, if we're looking at disproving a conjecture, proving that it's false, all we need to do is find one counterexample to prove that conjecture false. So a counterexample is a specific case for which the conjecture is false. So if somebody says, all teachers wear something, glasses, I just would have to find a case of a teacher who doesn't wear glasses to prove that conjecture false. So if a student makes a conjecture about this sum of two numbers, we just got to find a counterexample to prove them false. So this conjecture is the sum of two numbers is always more than the greater number. So that would be saying like 7 plus 9 is greater than 9. That's true. Now we've got to find a case that proves that false. Okay? If I add together two numbers, there's a possibility that, that one of those numbers is negative. So if I add together negative 7 plus 9, is that greater than 9? Well, no, it's not. 2 is not greater than 9. So you could say sum of two numbers is always more than the greater number. You just got to prove that false by saying 7, sorry, negative 7 and 9. That proves it false. So I want you to try these next four guided practice to see if you can prove a conjecture false and if you can make a conjecture about something. Now, making these conjectures is tough because you got to be really solid in a lot of these things and be able to work abstractly. So try them, but then I'll explain them once you're finished. Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds to pause and try those. Okay, so to explain making a conjecture for 4 and 5, making and testing a conjecture about 3 negative integers, basically what I would say is any 3 negative numbers multiplied by each other, the result will always be negative. Because if you think about it, when I multiply the first two numbers, I get a positive. That means I'm multiplying a positive by a negative, which would result in a negative. So multiplying any three negative integers results in a negative value, okay? 
next. The sum of any five consecutive integers. This is a lot like the last one with sum of three consecutive integers. If I add together three consecutive integers, it was divisible by three. If I do it for five, it's divisible by five. It will always end in five or zero, meaning it's always divisible by five. Okay? For the counterexample ones, you got to think a little bit outside the box for some of these, but for the first one, the value of x squared is always greater than the value of x. So multiplying a number by itself always gives you a greater number isn't true for numbers smaller than 1. If I multiply a half by a half, it's going to be a quarter. So that means a half is not greater than a quarter, but a half squared is a quarter. So that's why this value, a half for x, proves that false. Moving on to 7. The sum of two numbers is always greater than their difference. Well, you can add together two numbers that have opposite signs, like 5 and negative 4, that gives me 1. The difference between 5 and negative 4, I do 5 minus negative 4, that result is 9, that proves it false. The sum is less than the difference. So that's, that's a little tough to think about, but you've got to have good number sense to think of numbers that are counterexamples. So moving ahead, I'm going to have us do some sort of activity where we kind of talk about conjectures and counterexamples. Then I will have you move on to deductive reasoning. So everything up to this point has been inductive reasoning. Taking cases from a pattern and making a prediction based on that pattern. So you can move on to the next piece of this lesson.